Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United have just beaten Newcastle 3-1 at Old Trafford. It's a good win for Manchester United. Prior to this game, we'd only won one of our last five in the Premier League. Weren't the best of performances tonight. But we still got the win and top four is now in our hands and we are second in the Premier League. Now David De Gea, he made some good, good saves tonight. He also made an error. He was lucky not to be punished for that. Paul Scholes has come out and said that David De Gea is a real problem for Manchester United. But I said David De Gea is going to re remain our number one for at least this season. Like I updated you earlier on today, Solskjaer is prepared to sell either David De Gea or Dean Henderson in the summer. I think it should be David De Gea. Luke Shaw, I thought he put a good performance out tonight. Um, he created the most chances in the game and he put some dangerous crosses into the box. You know, Luke Shaw's really, really improved for Man United and he still remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Alex Tellez. Um, Harry Maguire, now I think he did well defensively. Uh, made some very good recoveries in that. Um, he did have some shaky moments in the game. Obviously, Harry Maguire's headed clearance led to Newcastle's equaliser. Harry Maguire has had some good games this season. He's also had bad games. You know, he wasn't worth the £80 million that we got him for. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. And the second most expensive sign at the club just behind Paul Pogba. Uh, Matic, um, I thought he was poor in the first half, but I thought he was much better in the second half. You know, he got forward more than that, which was good to see. I had a feeling that Matic was going to start this game tonight. Uh, Fred looks very energetic, but he didn't enjoy the best of games. Bruno Fernandes, I don't think he was brilliant tonight despite scoring from the penalty and despite getting the assist for Daniel James's goal. Uh, Bruno Fernandes obviously scored twice in our 4-0 win against Real Sociedad. But he has made the difference in this team. Marcus Rashford, he had a good game tonight. Um, he obviously scored our first goal. Um, it was a good goal as well. Uh, beat Carl Darlow at his near post. Daniel James, you know, I thought he had a good game tonight. Uh, good to see him get his name on the score sheet again. Daniel James also scored in our 4-0 win against Real Sociedad. Uh, Daniel James might get back into the team now uh, because he was out of the team for a while. Anthony Martial, I thought he was anonymous for large periods of the game, but there again, he didn't really get much service, Anthony Martial. Uh, Harry Maguire, um, he obviously got the assist for... Marcus Rashford's first goal. We brought some substitutions on in the game. We saw, saw Shaw Tyre come on. Good to see him make his first team debut. We also saw Juan Mata come on. And we saw Mason Greenwood come on. And Mason Greenwood looked quite lively when he came on. 
Newcastle, you know, they had their moments in the game. You know, they did have some chances, did Newcastle. You know, Jolinton uh, was quite wasteful for them. Uh, Maximan, um, I think he had a pretty good game for Newcastle. He obviously scored Newcastle's equaliser. It was a half folly from Maximan. Uh, Carl Darlow in Newcastle's goal made some very, very good saves. Don't forget Newcastle were missing four players tonight with injury. Uh, Callum Wilson was out. Uh, Fernandez was out. Manquilio was out and Scar was out. But we was expected to win this game tonight. You know, Newcastle are a very, very poor team. Uh, they are relegation fodder. You know, Newcastle could even go down this season. You know, we did beat them at St James's Park earlier on this season 4-1. So we've obviously done the double over them this season and we're beating them at Old Trafford last season 4-1. Newcastle's last win at Old Trafford was back in 2013. It was a goal from Kabai. And Steve Bruce is a very, very poor manager and I'm surprised he's still at Newcastle. He's managed quite a few clubs in his managerial career. You know, before Newcastle had Rafa Benitez, and I think, you know, Newcastle should have kept Rafa Benitez. But actually, Rafa Benitez did resign. Our next game is Real Sociedad in the Europa League around the 32 second leg at Old Trafford. Uh, basically, we're into the last 16 of the Europa League because we beat Sociedad in the first leg 4 0. It was goals from Bruno Fernandes, he scored two, Rashford scored, and Daniel James also scored. By the way, Solskjaer has said that Ahmad Dilo Traore could make his first start in the second leg against Real Sociedad. And I did say, didn't I? You know he's going to be a good asset for the first team. Ahmad Dilo Triore came on in the first leg and showed his tricks and that. He had been doing very, very well for the under-23s. But our next two league games are very, very hard. You know, we've got to play Chelsea away. Chelsea have been very, very good uh, under Thomas Tuchel. Chelsea are unbeaten under Thomas Tuchel. They appointed Thomas Tuchel in earlier on this season to replace Frank Lampard because Chelsea sat Frank Lampard after 18 months in charge. And after Chelsea, it is Manchester City away. Uh, a lot of United fans are expecting us to lose that. You know, Manchester City are the champions elect. Manchester City won again today against Arsenal 1 0. Man City are 10 points in front of us. But yeah, um, tonight, you know, we did have quite a lot of chances. Newcastle had shots as well. Uh, we dominated the possession. We had 70 odd percent possession. Uh, we was expected to dominate possession anyway. But it wasn't as the performance wasn't as good, you know, as the one against Real Sociedad. But yeah, we've won quite a few games now at Old Trafford this season. But there again, all our defeats have come at Old Trafford this season. We've been far better away from home than we have been at home because we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. Uh, Solskjaer was saying prior to this game against Newcastle, That he warned Manchester City that the title race is not over. You know, Solskjaer came out after the 1-1 one -one draw of West Brom and said, you know, we are still in this title race and we'll not settle for second in the title race. But he made a different admission after our 3-3 draw with Everton. You know, he said we shouldn't be considered as title chasers. But like I say, it's good to get back to winning ways in the Premier League. 
But I'm still disappointed, you know, that we didn't beat West Brom because, you know, we should be beating West Brom because they're a very poor team. You know, I'm disappointed that we didn't beat Everton. You know, we squandered a two-goal lead in that game against Everton and conceded in the 95th minute of stoppage time. I think we had enough chances to win at Arsenal. We certainly should have beat Sheffield United at Old Trafford. You know, if we'd have won them games, you know, I would have turned around and said, you know, we are still in this title race. I don't think we're in it. Maybe some Manchester United fans will tell you different. But I am certainly Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in. I think he's made very, very good progress at Manchester United. And I think he's going to be given at least another season at the football club. This is his third season and his second full season. You know, Solskjaer has been criticised a lot as Manchester United manager because we've obviously endured bad periods under him. You know, was poor earlier on in the season, we was poor at the first part of last season, we enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. I still don't know if Ollett is the long-term manager for Man United. Um, I've already said to you, he's got to win a trophy this season to avoid the sack. And like I said, you know, the FA Cup is a chance of a trophy winning to the quarterfinals of that and the Europa League is a chance of a trophy. We haven't won a trophy since 2017 and a club of our stature need to be winning trophies. Um, you can definitely say that Paul Pogba is a big miss in the team. You know, I think we lack quality in that midfield without Paul Pogba there. Obviously, Paul Pogba didn't play tonight. Uh, Paul Pogba is out with a thigh injury. Solskjaer did confirm prior to the game against Real Sociedad that Paul Pogba is going to be out for the rest of February. He's going to be back in early March. Paul Pogba in recent months, recent months has been very, very good. Um, he's been enjoying the best period in his Man United career uh, since he rejoined. He was out earlier on this season with an ankle injury and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. Uh, like I said, there's still a chance Paul Pogba will leave in the summer. You know, he's... Had a long running transfer saga. There's three clubs that are in for him. That's Real Madrid, Juventus and PSG. We have revealed our asking price for Paul Pogba. We want £100 million. His future is on hold until the end of the season. Um, it said a few weeks ago that we'd held talks with Paul Pogba regarding his future. Uh, apparently Solskjaer said he's happy and Solskjaer suggested Paul Pogba could sign a new contract. Uh, Mino Rioli is desperate to get his client out of the club in the summer. You know, Mino Rioli has been criticised quite a few times and he doesn't have a good relationship with Man United. You know, he recently admitted that he's working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer to avoid offence. He made an announcement back in December regarding Paul Popper and Solskjaer was furious with Mini Oriola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig. But last month it said that Paul Popper was considering making a U-turn at the club and he contradicted his agent Mini Oriola for the second time. Earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract with Man United until June 2022. As it stands at the moment, Pop is our most expensive signing, you know, because we paid £89 million for him. Um, obviously, there was no Edison Cavani tonight. Um, Edison Cavani has been out with a muscle injury. Um, if he had been available tonight, I think he would have played. Um, as far as I'm aware, he wasn't part of the squad. Um, Edison Cavani has made a fantastic impact since he's come in. You know, his hold-up play is good. His movement in that of the box is good. 
He creates chances and he also scores goals. Uh, Solskjaer did say prior to this game that Edison Cavani is set for contract extension talks because Cavani wants to stay at Man United beyond this season. So we'll probably trigger that one-year extension on his contract. There has been narratives coming out saying that Boca Juniors want him. Yeah, we got Edison Cavani on a free transfer last summer. You know, he signed a one-year contract with Man United with an option of a second year. Uh, Bay, there was no Eric Bay tonight. Um, like I've said to you, I certainly prefer Eric Bay ahead of it to Lindelof, but my element of concern about Eric Bay is too injury prone. Lindelof and Maguire don't work together in our back line. But I think Bay goes well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. I think they complement each other. Um, Tom Inway, um obviously had an injury, so he didn't play any part tonight. Uh, like I've said to you, this year's summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's biggest in his managerial career. Because we do need to make more signings in the summer transfer window. Now, like I updated you earlier on today, Solskjaer confirms he has got the backing of the owners to recommend the players that he wants in, including Erling Haaland. Um, it said the other week that we are prepared to smash our transfer record in the summer and Woodward set to hand Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a huge war chest to sign top players in all areas. Now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants three summer signings. He wants a forward, a right winner and a centre-half and he's set to sit down with Ed Woodward to negotiate our business in the next couple of weeks. So, as far as I'm aware, the board are going to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the summer, which is good. Uh, the summer transfer window will be his fifth transfer window's permanent Man United manager so far has enjoyed four transfer windows. Yes, Solskjaer has made good signings. He's spent over £200 million. But obviously, Solskjaer's not got all the players that he wanted to recommend in as yet. This is, you know, why the board's been one of the biggest problems at the club. But the board haven't backed any of the managers enough that we've had since Ferguson retired. But Woodward's come out several times to show his support for Rolly. And he did say towards the end of last year that he will back him with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. Woodward's been at the club since 2012 and... The Glazers have been at the club since 2005. It recently said we had a five-man centre-back shortlist. Now, I think at the end of this season, Solskjaer will sign a new contract. Um, it recently said Solskjaer's future is in doubt because Solskjaer admitted that no one spoke to him over a new contract. But it said the other week that we will wait until the end of the season to begin contract talks with Solskjaer. And it says we could offer him a new two-year deal. He's into the final 18 months of his current contract. Uh, when Solskjaer got the job permanently in March 2019, he signed a three-year contract at the club. Uh, there was a lot of United fans before, though, saying we did give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job too soon. But um, we have got to give him credit. Like I said, you know, he's got us to the Europa League last 16, um, got us to the FA Cup quarter-finals. We know it's going to be a tough game against Leicester. You know, he got us to the EFL Cup semi-final this season, lost that to Man City 2-0. Uh, did well last season in his first full season at the club, guided us to three semi-finals, got us qualification for the Champions League and got us third. 
And to Solskjaer's credit, he has got rid of a lot of the dead wood since he got recommended in. And like I said, I'm expecting more players to leave Man United in the summer transfer window. But like I've said to you, um, if we can finish in what the top four this season and win a trophy, I think that will represent a good season for Man United. Then that will give us something to build on. But even if we don't win a trophy this season, I still think Solskjaer is going to be given at least another season at the football club. You know, Ollie has been Man United manager now over two years. And reflecting now on his being at the football club, he's gained some managerial experience and he's learned quite a bit on the job. Man United is the third club in his managerial career. It's good that we've seen consistency in periods under Ollie because we didn't see consistency for a long time and got to say he's the best manager since Ferguson. You know, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer is inheriting players from other managerial eras. The best games we've had this season was the 6-2 win against Leeds and the 9-0 win against Southampton. We've enjoyed quite a few good games though um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I've told you my biggest concern about Solskjaer is his decision making because in a lot of his games at Man United he has been tactically naive but there's been some games where he's showed tactical flexibility. You know, when we have been inconsistent, not all the blame stemmed from him anyway. Obviously, some of the blame uh, stems from him. You know, earlier on this season, I was certainly Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out. And recently, I've been hearing Man United fans demanding Ole out and all of that. You know, saying like he's way out of his depth at the club and we've got, got to go get a manager in who would suit the strappings of the club and a manager in with a proven pedigree and all of that. But um, Molly, I trust. I really, really do. But uh, I think the players Man United could sign in the summer. You know, we could sign Erling Haaland. You know, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer would love to sign Erling Haaland. Apparently, I've been hearing Erling Haaland wants a 70 million contract. That's obviously a year, which equates to like £300,000 a week. Uh, there's a chance we could sign Sancho in the summer. Uh, £60 million has been quoted. Uh, apparently, Jules Conde is our top target. And uh, we're prepared to pay £61 million for him. And La Razion, which is a Spanish outlet, recently said that we are considered the favourites to sign him. Uh, narratives have been recently coming out about Caladou Koulibaly. But uh, yeah, I'm expecting us to make signings in the summer. Uh, Solskjaer said earlier on this season that our summer transfer plans could be affected by the pandemic. But despite that, I'm still expecting us to do business. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, don't forget, is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. We've sat three managers since Ferguson and that was David Moyes. We sacked him after 10 months. We sacked Louis van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning, you know, three trophies in his first season. And in the last, what, eight years or so, we've brought a lot of players in. You know, we spent over £1 billion on them. That includes what we spent under Ollie. Like I said, Ollie's spent over £200 million so far. Uh, mistakes have been made from Man United since Ferguson retired. That's why we were so inconsistent for so long. I think a lot of the players we've brought in in the last, what, eight years or so haven't been the right calibre players for Man United. You know, don't get me wrong, we have made good signings. And like I've said, in regards to Bruno Fernandes, he's our best signing we've made since Ferguson retired. You know, there's not many players here now from Louis van Gaal area. A lot of Louis van Gaal's players have gone. Uh, there's not... That many plays even the Mourinho where I think they're still around, is it five or six? Uh, there's only one play from the Moyes here, and that's one matter. Uh, but he only brought two plays in anyway, did uh, David Moyes. That was Fellaini and one matter, wasn't it? 
Uh, there's only two players here from Ferguson. That's Phil Jones and David De Gea. So, yeah. Um, on my next video, I will be giving you my player ratings from this game. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.